share with you uh, something that a friend of ours wrote to us a couple of years back uh, about Mother's Day. Only she said, you know what? Uh, mother was very important to her, but so was grandmother. And grandmoms are moms too, aren't they? And so our friend Barbara Walter in Mansfield sent us this. She, she talks about growing up and she says, My brother and I spent our days with grandmother when we were young and our mom and dad were working. Grandmother always had a prayer on her lips, but she started and ended every day on her knees talking to our Lord. We read the Bible every day and I was reading the Bible by myself by the time I was five years old. My brother and I spent our days happily playing in the meadow, wading in the creek, looking for tea berries and huckleberries, exploring granddad's workshop, and borrowing his tools for a project that had come to mind, eating fresh hot cornbread with homemade butter while sitting underneath the grapevines and playing with the neighbor, uh, neighbor's kids who are our age. Occasionally, we would choose to ignore grandmother's instructions. Uh, I recall one time when she told us that we could pick the apples that were on the ground, but not to climb up in the tree and pick the ones still in the tree. Needless to say, we went right up in the tree. <laughs> After we had firmly uh, been seated in the tree, Snowball, grandmother's big white heifer, appeared underneath the tree. Snowball had an unpredictable temperament and also chose to communicate with us by mooing rather loudly and repeatedly. Our only choice, since coming down from the tree with Snowball there was not an option, was to try to yell louder than Snowball was mooing in hopes that Grandmother would hear us and save us. We did, and she did. After she got the cow away and got us down from the tree, there were no recriminations. She only said, the Lord knew that I told you not to be there, so he sent Snowball. <laughs> Another time, after being denied permission to go and play uh, at another house with my friend, I went anyway. I got stung underneath my eye by a yellow jacket. I went home screaming as my eye continued to swell shut. Grandmother put ice on my eye and simply said, The Lord knew you weren't supposed to go there. <laughs> Years later, I remember these incidents fondly. The Lord always disciplines us for our uh, loving grandmother so she wouldn't have to. We learned that he was always watching over us. We learned that a loving uh, father disciplines his children to teach them to listen, to teach them to follow his instructions, to teach them right from wrong. It was a lesson well learned and one that guides me yet today. As we look at our text today, I thought it was very fitting that uh, Barbara write these words about uh, how uh, the effect of her grandmother and her parents impacted her in her love for the Lord, love for His Word, and an understanding of how God works in our lives. I invite you to turn to both Exodus chapter 20 and Colossians chapter 3. If you're able to keep both of those and flip back and forth, it's just a single verse apiece. Or if you can, just choose the one in Exodus, perhaps. Exodus 20, verse 12, and Colossians 3, verse 20. And when you have found your text, if you would, please stand in honor of the reading of God's Word this morning. Uh, Exodus 20 contains uh, the Ten Commandments. We're going to read the Fifth Commandment in verse 12, which says, Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land, and... The Lord your God, uh, live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And in Colossians chapter 3, verse 20, children obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Almighty God, thank you for your word today. I just pray, God, that you would open our hearts and minds to what you have to say to us today, that uh, we would be very aware of how you are speaking to us in the uh, next few minutes. I pray, God, that you would uh, bring the balm of your spirit to touch our hearts and to bring healing and help and strength and encouragement and peace. And that as we finally remember the ways that you have blessed us in the past, that we are reminded of your faithfulness and trust you for the future. I ask that Jesus be lifted up 
and everything be uh, pleasing and honorable to him. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. And God's people said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you so much. You know, the International Standard Bible uh, Commentary says that Islamic tradition today toward women in the Middle East is not how women were viewed in the ancient world, in Hebrew times most specifically. Because when we read God's uh, plan and design for the family, it doesn't line up with the Middle Eastern traditions of today. God's design for the family and society gave women a much greater place in the society. Think about leaders like Miriam, Deborah, Sarah, Rebecca, Hannah, and other Old Testament matriarchs. Hebrew women were known for their deeply embedded love for their children. In fact, this uh, especially set them apart from all of the pagan nations around them at the time that God was saying, no, here's a much better way, and I'm working this among my people, this deeply embedded love. And, and in the Hebrew society, motherhood was highly respected. Can't be said of some of the pagan cultures, but certainly of God's people, it was true that motherhood was highly respected. And so what we do here today in, in honoring our moms and grandmothers and our families is a very God-honoring thing to do and, and certainly has its roots way back in uh, the scriptures. Under God's law, as we read in Exodus 20, uh, mother and father were to, be to, were to be honored. You could expect it in some of the other cultures, perhaps, that they say, now listen to your father and what he says to do. But, but notice that it says here in, in uh, chapter 20, verse 12, honor your father and your mother. And so there is this distinct uh, word from God in his law, in the Ten Commandments of all places, and moms and dads were to be honored. In the New Testament, that didn't change. After all, Jesus didn't come to change uh, the word of God anyway, but to fulfill it. And, and as we read in Colossians, it says much the same thing. And I'll, I'll look at the slight difference in just a, a few moments, but uh, he's saying, you know what? It's the same thing. God's design uh, for the home was an ideal plan. An ideal plan. Christ elevated uh, women above the pagan world. Moms were to be held in high esteem. Parents were be, uh, to be honored. The home was to be a special place. God designed the home with an ideal plan. Now, our experience tells us that that isn't always the way it works out. Uh, and, and I want to look at that because there's something very special that God has for us, I believe, today. Well, first of all, the Lord designed mothers and family as a blessing. And he offers hope when things aren't as he designed. And my first point today is to look at that ideal plan. Just very briefly to touch on some of the high points of this ideal plan that God had when he designed the home. God's design for the family is a blessing. It's a blessing to be in a Christian home. It's a blessing to be a part of that. And many of you know that and can say yes. You know, like Barbara said, you know, we grew up, uh, we had parents, we had grandparents that, that prayed to God, that, that uh, began and ended their day on their knees before the Lord, and they loved the Lord, and they understood the Lord, and they, and they passed that along to us. And, you know, that's a part of God's ideal plan for the family, which wasn't just for the family. Because the family is the basic unit of society, God's plan was really uh, a plan to be a, an ideal plan for the entire community and even for the nation. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And for them, it was a picture of the promised land. Listen, God's saying, I'm going to take you out of this place of slavery and out of this place of chaos and misery. And I'm going to lead you to this place that's described as a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a good place. And this is how you keep it a good place. This is how you prosper. This is how you build on it. This is how you improve what's already a good place that I'm giving you. You follow these instructions that I'm giving you. And a part of that is to honor father and mother. So that uh, that society would be strong. That there would be security. That there would be uh, hope and help. 
and structure and love in the family and in the community and therefore